Hey everyone, Creole Parametric 7.0 was released earlier today, April 14th, 2020, and one of the biggest enhancements that people are most excited about is multi-body modeling. Let's take a look at that right now. First off, if you take a look in the model tree, you'll notice that we have a bodies folder. Here we have body one. There's a little blue star. Let me zoom in on that for you. And that indicates that this is the active body. In other words, any new features or geometry will be added to this default body. And again, I only have one body because I just started out the model. Also, if you take a look in the model tab, we now have this new body group. You can do split body, create a new body, Boolean operations, and from the overflow menu, there is a remove body command, which is grayed out because right now I only have my one body. In my part, I've just created a couple of sketches. Here's sketch one, here's sketch two over there. And I've got a lot of overlapping entities in sketch two because I'm going to take advantage of sketch regions. So let's get at it. Let's start creating some geometry. I'm going to select sketch one out of the model tree. Here I've got my mini toolbar and I'll just choose the extrude command. Wow, it's going up a big distance. Let's flip the direction and change the depth over here to a small value. 0.5 is good. And you can see the geometry that I'm getting. If you take a look at the ribbon for the extrude feature, we now have this body options tab and you can add the geometry to body one and there's also the checkbox here to create a new body i will use that later on but let's just hit the check mark middle mouse button in order to create our first feature and again it get got added to body one over here now let's take a look at using sketch regions for creating uh, other geometry and actually I'm going to use the new body command first I'll click on new body here you get a dialog box you can change the name if you want but I will just click OK and by default body 2 is now set as the active body also now if I expand body 1 you'll see that extrude 1 is a member of body 1 or contributes geometry to body 1 if I right click on the body here i have the ability to set body one back again as the default body but i actually want to add the geometry to body two and what i'm simulating here is setting up the geometry for a bunch of tooling in here uh, all within the same part file let's go to the filter in the lower right hand corner i'm going to change this to sketch region let me close this little warning in here I'm going to select a bunch of different bodies. Now, really, I should only pick these two bodies, but I'm going to make a deliberate mistake to show you some other functionality later on uh, for multi-body, specifically the split command for getting rid of this section that I incorrectly selected in here. But I've got my different sketch regions selected. Now let's hit the extrude command. I'm going to right click over the depth drag handle to change the depth to symmetric. And let's do a depth of four. So that is good for this particular body. Again, if I go to body options, you'll see that this is going to body two, but you could actually select in here and change which body is getting the geometry. So let's hit the check mark. And so there I have my second one. And one thing that you'll want to do pretty early on is apply different appearances to your different bodies so that you can distinguish between them. So let me go in here and find a nice blue color. Let's select body two and then middle mouse button and that way I can distinguish between the two. And also, uh, let's create our other additional body over here. Sketch regions is still selected. Let's hold down the control key to select these two regions. And this time I will choose to extrude from the mini toolbar. Once again, let's change this to asymmetric depth. Change this value here to four. This is good. But this time I'm gonna to go to body options and use the checkbox to create a new body. You can see that here it says that it will be body three. That's good. Let me hit the check mark again over here to create that one. Let me go to my appearances. Let's change the color of this one. Here, this is good. 
select the body out of the body folder in the model tree and I've got that for the next one right now my bodies are getting in the way of the sketch regions that I want to select so if I left click on it from the mini toolbar I can choose to hide these two different bodies and that way this enables me to select the three different regions that I want to use for the next component or actually the next body uh, let's go to the model tab and then choose to extrude and right now you'll notice that the preview is not giving me uh, the filled in solid geometry let me change the depth to symmetric and I'm going to do a depth of three in here and once again I'm going to create a new body for this one over here and when I choose to create a new body now you can see that we get the filled in feature preview that's going to be created so that one is good uh, let's see yep Aaron like everything I've got over here let's hit the check mark and once again I'm gonna change the color of this one over here ah, this is good select the body middle mouse button and that way that is changed in color let's bring back these other two bodies over here oh yeah one thing that I forgot to mention earlier uh, I noticed something interesting when I turned on the display of my columns for feature ID I noticed that the body one the default body has a negative value uh, that's just something I noticed earlier but anyhow I've got them created in here also when you select the different bodies from the mini toolbar besides this set as default body command you can do a body merge you can do a body intersect but what I want to do is a body subtract I want to get uh, sort of like carve out this geometry from this body over here and I also want to keep the bodies uh, let me show you what happens if I accidentally don't turn on to keep the bodies let me activate the collector for the modifying body I will select this body over here you can see that the preview dashes this out uh, here we have the references tab one other thing that I want to point out I chose to do a subtract but within the ribbon for this command you can change this to be a merge or to be an intersect and the intersect will will create geometry from the shared geometry of two or more bodies and that's when the interesting thing about this you can actually select multiple bodies to modify with a bunch of these different commands but let's hit the check mark over here and because I did not check the option to keep the bodies it actually got rid of one of my bodies let's go back over here and then edit definition now keep bodies is grayed out so what I'm actually gonna have to do is get rid of this right click on it choose delete click the OK button hey now we got body four back over here let's repeat the process of doing the subtract let's subtract and this time I'm going to turn on keep bodies let's click in the collector for the modifying body and I'll select this part over here this is good I will hit the check mark and now if I select this oops let's do it out of the bodies folder and hide it now we've subtracted the geometry and here you can see I have some other geometry in here which is blocking because of the intentional mistake that I made later earlier but let's go back and let's bring back body four do another subtract operation and right now let's change this from sketch region back to geometry let me see if I pick from list I can select the body from left mouse clicks I use the keep from, or pick from list just because I wasn't sure if it was going to be in there but anyhow let's right mouse button choose do a body subtract actually let me go to the model tab just to show you that you can go to boolean operations here we have it doing a merge let's change this to subtract keep the bodies activate the collector for the modifying body and select this one over here and hit the check mark so again that's some of the ways that you can do these different boolean operations now let's take a look let's see what do I want to show you now um, 
let's t fix that mistake that I did earlier. And it will help if I get this body. Oh, that's the intent surfaces. Now let's just select it out of here. Body four. Let's hide this. And I'm going to use the split body command to get rid of this out of here. I'll choose split body and body to split. Let's see, splitting object, let me click in here, and I will select this over here. Oh, I haven't selected the body split. Let's split that. Now I've got the splitting object over here. And you'll notice the orange preview. It's pretty intuitive. It's getting exactly what I want to remove out of here, even though it's the splitting object. I just select that one surface, and it figures out that I want to remove essentially that entire extrude. So hit the check mark. Now we've got the other additional body five out of here. We've got a split body feature located in there. Let's see, let's bring back body four for a moment. Take a look at materials. So I will go to my model properties command. I have that added to my quick access toolbar. Here's something that's interesting. There's now a default material that's automatically assigned to stuff. If I click on the change button, we get this warning in here. Starting from Creo 7.0, any part has a default properties container material. It will be assigned whenever a real material is not assigned. The default system material is not reported in drawing bomb, 3D bomb, windshield, etc. And you can choose not to show this message in the future. Let's go to the grant library that was added in Creo Parametric 7.0. Let's go to our ferrous metals. Let's add a few different metals here to the model. I'll right click on here and choose add to model. And when I add it to the model, it actually assigns this material to all five bodies. But let's also get this one in here, add to model. Uh, let's see, let's just grab one other one in here. Let's grab the medium carbon add to the model and so now these are available in here let's click the OK button and then close out of here and then if I see in my body you have the little tag here indicating that the high carbon steel has been assigned over here and same with the other different bodies now you can right click on the different bodies and choose to assign material and here are these other different materials that I have added to the model Let's make, assign that one. Since that part's the same, let's assign the same material. And so in this way, I'm having different materials assigned to the different components. Let's see. Oh, also one other command that I saw inside of there, mass property settings. So here we have essentially the mass properties dialog box, and they'll do it for each individual body that is assigned in here. All right, let's click the OK button to get out of that one. All right, a few other commands to take a look at in here. Uh, first off, this other body over here, I can right click and choose set as construction, and I'll get a bit of a different dimmed out symbol next to it in the bodies folder. So construction geometry, if I remember correctly, that is geometry that's not going to contribute to the mass properties of the part. Also, let's go to body one over here and right click and I can convert this to sheet metal. And here we have the dialog box. You can specify whatever thickness that you want for the sheet metal part. And this can be a different thickness than what the part was originally set to. I think I extruded that to a value of 0.5. You need to specify the driving surface. I'll pick this surface over here. You can see a preview of the resulting geometry that we will get. You also have the ability to include surfaces, exclude surfaces. There's an option tab over here for adjacent rounds and chamfers treatment. Keep not, not classified surfaces as a quilt and set driving surface opposite selected surface. This is good. Let's hit the check mark. And you'll notice that when I converted that to sheet metal, it got set as the default body. And if you take a look at my ribbon, we now have a sheet metal tab with your various different sheet metal commands available to you in order to work on this particular body. We also have a model tab with your standard different commands over here. Let's go to 
body two, set it as the default, and that way we could work on body two if we wanted to. And so again, just a lot of different commands. Oh, something I just noticed, the body now has actually a different symbol for it uh, in the bodies folder, interesting. All right, uh, let's see, just one. Oh yeah, another one, create part from body. So let's click on that command and you can give a name to the component and let me just call this multi body extract, I don't know, body two. For the name, you can fill in a common name. Here's the option to use a default template. And just like if you're creating a part, if you uncheck that, you'll be able to select which of your model templates that you want to use. In another video, I'll show you some enhancements in Creo Parametric 7.0. They made a big change to the default templates in Creo Parametric uh, 7.0. Absolute accuracy is now the default, and so you have a bunch of additional default templates that are provided to you. But again, I'll go into that later on. And if you take a look at the model tree for this extracted component, here we have an external copy geometry feature that is located in here. And that's something that Martin Neumuller had mentioned at the January PTC user conference. In order to have multi-body modeling part of the core functionality of Creo Parametric, they actually had to make some of the stuff that is traditionally available in advanced assembly extension available in standard mode, and in particular, these external copy geometry features for creating the new bodies. So anyhow, that is just a quick look at some multi-body modeling. Also, if you go into the help for PTC, help.ptc.com, and go into the material for Creo Parametric 7.0, there are links to a bunch of different videos that PTC has created to teach you about how to use multi-body modeling. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.